Hello, 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 and welcome to another Grand Rouge unit of the Reek. And today, we're taking a look at the M10 Grouse. The use of tanks on the battlefield can sometimes be misunderstood. Uh, back when I used to watch the History Channel a lot, you see like all the bloody tank warfare shows and playing World of Tanks and other video games. It's like, okay, you know, tanks are fine, other tanks, it's very much run and run engagement. You know, 13 Shermans for every Tiger, all of that stuff. However, in actuality, it's quite a bit different. You see, most of the time, tanks aren't really fighting other tanks. Because even back in World War II of the mass production of tanks, tanks were quite a rare thing on the battlefield. Most of wars are run by infantry, really. And so the majority of the time, tanks were just being used to blow up fortified position and soft, squishy infantry target. There's a very famous statistic out, yeah. And Roughly 90% of ammunition used by tanks in the Second World War, and I wouldn't be surprised even today, is mainly high explosive shells, the other 10% being armor penetration. Because of this, you can use tanks in a sort of artillery role. There's quite a lot of pictures online of Sherman tanks actually being set up behind the hill and being used to shell enemy positions from an indirect manner. And also with the M10 tank destroyer for the 6th South African Armed Division in Italy. During their fight in Italy, and you gotta realise Italy is a rather mountainous country, there wasn't really a whole lot of tanks for these tank destroyers to shoot at. So by the winter of 1944, with the South Africans starting to settle in, for that winter, most of their M10s would end up just being used as static artillery gun positions to blast the ray at the German defensive lines. In game, the M10 Grouse is a 65 point tank destroyer available to the 6th South African Armoured Division. And it has a single weapon. That weapon being the classic 76mm American gun with 24 AP shells and 30 high explosive shells. 130mm penetration, 8 damage, 45% accuracy, 1700m range, and a rate of fire of 7 rounds a minute, making it a rather decent anti-tank cannon. And also with the high explosive shells, because this is technically an artillery piece, it has artillery piece stats, 3.8 HE damage, infinite range, because artillery, and lower accuracy, same rate of fire. Down to the miscellaneous stats, you have 75mm frontal armor, reek top armor, 25mm on the side, and 25mm out back. You are indirect fire capable with this gun, and it also has a radio as well, which is quite pleasant. You go 36 kilometers off road, 42 kilometers on the road, medium self, and good optics. So, in battle, the M10 Grouse is actually quite similar to the Soviet Su-76 in both the anti-tank as well as artillery role. You know, compared to the SU-76, the artillery tab run at least is the anti-tank. SU-76 doesn't have indirect fire capabilities. You do have a bit of a better anti-tank capabilities with the M10 Grouse as you have the American 76, which is a bit more high velocity compared to the system. It does mean the Grouse is a pretty effective anti-tank killer. Of course, it's going to have a bit of a harder time against Tigers and Panthers as an obvious caveat, but most of the time, especially in 1v1s against the Axis, it's mainly Stugs, Panther 4s, and other mid-range armor. So this gun is pretty capable of knocking those guys out. However, of course, the gimmick is, well, you can use this thing as a bloody artillery gun. And it is pretty effective. The main thing is that you do have the radio trait allowing you to get rather accurate shots. And because this is a unit which will probably be on the front lines, you're probably going to be within radio range of things which you do want to blow up with the artillery or have recon nearby to give you good coordinates. So you're going to have very accurate shots. This does mean this is a pretty useful unit for blowing up anti-tank guns before you get into range of said anti-tank guns. However, even though this may be a frontline unit, I wouldn't really recommend it in the aggressive role, as you don't have a machine gun, unfortunately, compared to some other M10s. And of course, you still have mediocre armor, your open top. And even though you do have a lot of high explosive shells, once again, you want to be taking advantage of the long rangeness of the gun rather than trying to use it in a direct 
fire fashion. Its availability is pretty standard, you get 3 in A phase, 6 in B and 9 in C phase with 2 cards available. It is not exactly a necessary unit in the anti-tank role, because by George, or plain 6 African, you have a lot of very good anti-tank weaponry available, but for a nice mix between anti-tank and high explosive capabilities, this is very cost effective at 65 points. And it's also a pretty good unit to get at the start of a match, just because of that dual utility role. You can use it to pick off enemy machine gun and anti-tank rifle teams at the start, and then also blow up any enemy transports or tanks which do decide to tussle with you at the front. Overall, the M10 Grouse is a pretty decent, you know, a bit of a gimmicky unit, of course, because it's pretty rare for tanks in this game to also be able to be used as proper artillery pieces. But that's most likely a good thing. Imagine if all the Shermans could shoot indirectly. The Axis would really have no bloody chance of winning. But, uh, well, I'm gonna leave it off at yeah, that. This has been another Angry Shooting of the Week. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as usual, please just take it easy.